Hi, so this is the project where I started to really write my own shaders. So I just wanted to show some of my early shaders. So I am going to show code, but this is just meant to be a quick and casual overview. I'm just going to go over the highlights of the code, but if you want, you can pause at any time to see all the details. The code is a little over commented because some of this was written over three years ago when I started to write these shaders. And lastly, you'll notice a lot of these functions that start with Unity. And these functions are actually taken from the official Unity documentation for the shader graph nodes. And I basically copy and pasted them to a header file, which I include with all my shaders. So I'm just gonna enter play mode here because this waterfall effect actually has a particle portion of it. Up here, the main part is your generic noise shader. Um, I added a Voronoi layer to it, and I think there's a there's an outline to the noise as well. If we check here, everything is configurable. So yeah, we do have an edge um, that uses a step function. Yeah, so uh, here, use the step function to create the edge, and I subtract the main noise so I can isolate it. And it looks like I played around with some uh, twirling here just to make the Voronoi uh, a little more dynamic. And we should be able to control it here. Just another parameter to play around with. So that controls the Voronoi visibility. And of course we can change the color if we want to. And there's another one going upwards uh, just to make it look like the splash. The particles is uh, another noise alpha cutoff, except this one has a uh, radial uh, mass to it. So we can control it using that variable. And how I do that is I use the length function here to get a uh, circular mass to control the dissolve. So what's interesting with this is uh, this uses the Unity particle system, which allows you to grab the age percent parameter here into one of the texture coordinates. So we can use that over here. It tells you where it is. Um, it says text core uh, Z value, which is uh, this here. So basically the particle system can control the amount of dissolve based on um, how much lifetime is left on the particle. Oh, and I forgot to mention this also has a smooth step option you wanted to but I thought that this looked better with the art style and I should also mention that all my noise dissolves use the remap function to remap the normalized alpha values to get the dissolve effect and there's other ways to do it like adjusting the alpha cutoff for clipping but this is what I do for most of the shaders here so a lot of this is just an extension of this noise and dissolve idea so, for example, this blood effect when uh, players get hit is actually the same shader as um, this waterfall here. And we use the uh, dissolve parameter here to uh, fade it away naturally. So here we have um, your most basic dissolve that you see in a lot of games. It's basically the same concept as this where we have a an edge using the step function and of course uh, we add some bloom to the edge just to make it a little interesting so then i started to play around with the coordinate system so this dissolve actually uh, dissolves based on the value of the uh, object space and this one here is yet another dissolve except it uh, depends on the position of this object here so we can do this and this one actually uses a very simple script here where I just pass in the position as a uh, shader parameter. I also played around with uh, noise in world space so we can do these kind of uh, wind effects on this vegetation here. And I think I added a mask so basically the top gets affected more than the bottom. 
And this effect is supposed to mimic a laser as if it's uh, going through like, like a dusty area or something. I use it for my summon turret skill that you can see in my other video. And it uses a line renderer so we can move it how we want. And basically this is just another noise effect except I made it very small along the line renderer and I added some uh, HDR colors so it shimmers like this. And this one here is uh, inner glow effects. Um, so basically the original sprite looks like that and we could fade it in. And I was just experimenting with some glow effects that isn't the usual way of uh, basically duplicating the sprite and offsetting it. This one's a little more costly. It actually blurs the whole sprite and then it composes it. So it you only see the, um, the overlap. And it looks something like this here. So this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, we blur the original sprite and then we compose it on top of the uh, already rendered sprite. Um, additively to get that glow and we don't have to worry about the alpha of the parts that don't overlap because uh, we're just altering the color of the original sprite here. So for this laser effect here it's actually two line renderers uh, overlaid so we have the core bright area and this part I call the distortion area which is the background with the color and um, th these ones actually use a texture that gets repeated so it gets scrolled along so I also added a uh, grab pass layer so I can distort the background it's a, it's a little hard to see here and it might not be worth the performance but this is just a test effect so everything here is obviously fully customizable so we wanted to speed it up it'll look something like that and I also added this feature where you can actually control the mask because if we look here it, it kind of starts fading back here um, so we use custom mask we use this kind of just a test square with blurred edges here the default mask is uh, just a sign function to slowly fade it out and the shader looks something like this. Um, it's a little overly commented because it's one of my earlier shaders. So I experimented with the line renderers some more and I have this uh, lightning effect here. So this effect is basically just more overlaid scrolling noise with bloom. Uh, but I also mess around with the vertices just to make it look a little more chaotic. So I actually wrote my own script here that animates the line renderer during gameplay. Uh, looks something like this, uh, excuse the public variables, it's just a test script. And I was playing around with um, some square waves that I found online. So, so you can actually control the polygonal curve rather than a standard uh, sine wave. So here it is in action. Um, we increase the uh, points here, it just looks more like a sine wave. So if I... Put it to two it looks a little crazier and of course we can control the speed and amplitude all the usual settings i also uh, experimented with flow maps in this project um, i mostly learned how to do this uh, just through online tutorials but i made my own version here that i use for the corrosive effects for this game And basically it's just two flow map effects overlaid on top of each other, except uh, one of them has bloom to make this uh, shimmery effect. And that looks something like this. And you can of course uh, edit all the parameters here, the colors. Um, I have this effect magnitude slider because this is actually used in game for the character effects. So this is just the easy normalized value I can use to uh, fade in and fade out the effect. So here we have an orb effect, which is just another scrolling noise, except we use a really small noise scale just to get this single blob here. And it uses a similar radius dissolve as the uh, waterfall particles that we saw. The corrosive bow skill that we saw earlier actually uses this shader, except uh, I just color this green. I also use this shader for a portal effect. Um, it's basically the same thing, but with the twirl added into it. And here we have one of my earliest shaders, which is just yet another scrolling noise, except this one has a texture so we can shape it to look uh, more like a flame. And I use this effect for the character ignite effect. 
as well as the burning ground effects using the particle system. I also experimented with the grab pass, which is just an easy way in Unity to grab the frame buffer into a texture. So here we just have a simple Voronoi pattern that's shifting the UV. And it looks like this. So we generate the Voronoi in this line and then we use it as a UV when we're sampling the grab pass. This led to a much more interesting shader, which is this black hole effect here. So this effect actually uses real life calculations of uh, gravitational lensing. I found the equations in this website, which somebody converted the deformation into a 2D image. So basically I just adapted it to work on a multi-camera setup here in Unity. And of course we can tweak all the different parameters here. I also added this optional dark center here, where I basically just render it by calculating a smooth step. And because we're using a camera setup, I also have this extra calculation here to basically fade off the effect as we get closer to the edges. And this just makes it so you don't see a seam where the effect falls off. So without that line, it looks something like this. As you can see, there's a very obvious seam here. And if we add back the line, it smoothly transitions. And we have this hologram effect, which looks complicated, but it's just a few effects stacked on top of each other. So I just use a bunch of sine functions stacked on top of each other to get these oscillations. So the vertices get oscillated as well as the scan lines here. And that looks like this. So all the scan lines are actually just created with the frac function. So we just get the fraction part of the vertical UV. And I, it looks like I decided to use world position here just for aesthetic reasons rather than the local UV. And also there's a very simple chromatic aberration here. All of these, of course, are tweakable using these variables here. This is a pretty easy way to make any sprite look like a hologram. Here I have a dissolve that's a little more interesting. It uses a grid pattern. And the way I did this is by using the frac function on the horizontal and vertical directions. And then I step it to get discrete lines rather than a gradient. Here we have my freezing effect that combines a lot of the stuff we've seen so far. So it's a dissolve effect, but there's a Voronoi layer on the edges, as well as a refraction effect. I have an ice texture parameter here to provide the base color. And I add a refraction effect on this texture based on another texture I call ice normal. This isn't an actual normal map, it's just a UV shift, but I just use a normal map that I found because it works really well for this. So the refraction effect you probably notice is based on screen UV. So here I'm building the offset and then I offset it here in the ice texture sampler. And I chose to use screen UVs because that's just the best way to get a lot of movement in 2D. I also experimented with this vertex extrusion effect. And this is done by just shifting the vertices based on the XY direction here. Normally this works quite well in 3D because we can just use the normal direction, but just using the XY direction of the vertice doesn't really work out because it depends where your object is in the sprite sheet. So normally this is actually commented out, but I just added it in to show it here. Here I actually create two slightly different noises and then I subtract to get the edge. But I think using a smooth step would have worked very similarly here. So just to show you what that looks like, I can return this edge. And that looks like this. So everywhere we see gray is where the Voronoi pattern appears. And like the corrosive effect, I have this normalized value so I can apply this effect very easily. 
In the gameplay code, this value is determined by the number of status effect stacks. So often we'll see this value somewhere in the middle, which makes it look like a partial freeze. So this Voronoi edge is not particularly realistic, but I just thought it makes it look a little more interesting. Sort of like a magical creeping frost effect. And of course we can edit the look of this if we wanted to. But I chose a smaller Voronoi scale just because that looked better on the screen. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show. I'm no longer working on this project, but you can check out my other videos or my portfolio website if you want to see my more recent projects. Thanks for watching.